Welcome into the studio. This looks an awful lot like the Ender 3 V3 SE, but it's not. This is the KE. And maybe the K stands for Clipper? I really don't know. But this is a 500 millimeters per second bed slinger from Creality that everyone is in love with. All right, here we go. I am super impressed with this Creality Ender 3 V3 KE. This is the direction that we've wanted 3D printers to go for a really long time. And here we are in 2024, and now Creality is focusing on the user experience. So both machines, the Creality KE, that's this one, and the Creality SE, which we have a video for that as well, are moving in the direction of improving upon the user experience, focusing on unboxing and assembly in just a matter of minutes, and the user interface, the default features that come on this, and we're gonna go over all that here in a moment. That's what we want to see in 3D printers. We want people to have their first impression or their first experience to be successful. Now, is this machine for you? Stick around. We're going to go over all of its features. We're going to take a look at its print quality, and then we'll have a discussion on uh, who this machine's for. And before we get started, thank you to Sane Smart for sending over this Creality KE for us to share with our audience and a stack of TPU95A. If you didn't know, the KE is a TPU printing monster. And uh, Sane Smart, we appreciate you sending over that filament. I think it's priced at about $31.99, which fits in kind of in the normal price range for good quality TPU. Any filament company out there has their TPU priced at about $28 to about $33. Um, so that's pretty good. We'll have links uh, in the description for that and uh, go take a look. Okay, so let's get right into the main features of the printer. This is a clipper based machine from Creality. And uh, like I said, I don't know if the K stands for clipper, but it prints at a maximum speed of about 500 millimeters per second, which is pretty common with these, uh, you know, faster bed slingers or even Core XY machines running clipper. Your typical speeds that you're going to be printing with are going to be around the 300 millimeters per second range, which is what I printed some of these things at. Of course, it has your standard features like auto bed leveling. It has a filament runout sensor and power loss recovery. Those are all kind of standard. Now it has Wi-Fi 3D printing as you'd expect. And of course it has all of your Clipper web interface management, things like that. Of course it supports Creality cloud printing, which enables you to do one click printing uh, from your desktop or mobile device. And as I mentioned, it is a TPU printing monster. It prints it actually really, really well. And you'll see that in the print results here. One of these is printed in TPU. I'll show you here in a moment. The build volume on the KE is 220 by 220 by 240 millimeters on the Z which makes this kind of a medium-sized 3D printer pretty common. The heated build plate gets up to about 100C, and it comes stock with a PEI flexible magnetic sheet. As far as bed adhesion goes, PLA stuck really well. In fact, maybe even too well. I had to use uh, glue stick as an interface layer to uh, prevent that PLA from just sticking too tightly to the uh, build plate. However, TPU, I didn't use anything. I just cleaned it with some soap and water and uh, sprayed a little isopropyl alcohol on it, and uh, TPU printed fine, stuck really well. Now, as for the tool head on the KE, it uses a 60 watt ceramic heater and a bimetal heat break, which I think is copper and titanium. And that helps reduce uh, heat creep throughout the uh, tool head. It gets up to a maximum temperature of 300 C, which makes it really good for PLAs, PTGs, ABSs, ASAs, and TPUs, of course. And it has dual parts cooling fans, which is important. Uh, they're coming both from both the left and right side of the tool head. And that's really important if you're unsure of what that means. When you're printing models that are asymmetrical, airflow becomes challenging. And so having a single parts cooling fan or air only coming across from one side um, you'll find out on the back of the print or on the left side of the print or things like that, you'll have cooling issues, issues with overhangs and things like that on that side. With dual parts cooling fans, that kind of alleviates that. Um, ideally, three would be better, but two is pretty darn good. And it allows for even airflow on both sides so that you get that symmetrical cooling and you'll have even overhangs or or bridges or things like that. So it's it's a nice feature to have. I would say it's becoming more and more common. All right, let's talk about the motion system. It is a traditional bed slinger and it uses dual eight millimeter rods on the Y and it uses dual eight millimeter screws on the Z. It uses a 12 millimeter rail on the X and there's a single motor driving each of those axes. As for the interface, it uses a 4.3 inch color touch display. And of course that's gonna be your traditional clipper interface. It's really simple to use. And I think that anybody, whether you're a novice uh, or an advanced user, um, you'll do just fine with it. As for slicing, it's compatible as you'd expect with any major slicer. I used Creality Print and I find that their one-click printing is kind of nice. And that's what I'm talking about, how Creality is going in the right direction with their user experience. 
the same experience, whether you're printing with the Creality K1, the SE, or even this KE, is so nice. Slice the model, Wi-Fi printing, select the printer, one click, and it does it for you. It's kind of nice. I like it. All right, let's talk about print results. Ultimately, that's what's important, right? When we buy a machine, we want to put nice filament in and we want to get nice results out. Now, Creality's done a really fantastic job of now including a lot of the features that we've come to expect, like auto bed leveling, things like that. It'll just increase our chance of having a successful print. I wanted to really demonstrate how well this printer could print traditional PLA as well as TPU, which that direct drive extruder is really good at. This is a Nintendo logo that I picked up off of printables. And one of these is printed in PLA and the other is printed in TPU. The PLA one is printed in Polymaker's Polylite PLA Pro white and red, and the TPU is printed in Sane Smart's TPU 95A white and red. Now, as I'm holding them like this, I don't know, can you tell the difference? I'll have some B-roll, and you'll be able to take a look at that here much closer. I think they both printed really, really, really well, and that kind of shows you how well this machine does print TPU. TPU can be a little bit more difficult, it can be a little bit more stringy, and uh, but ultimately, the results came out uh, quite, quite impressive. Layer lines uh, are almost invisible. It was it was printed at a 0.2 layer height, so nothing nothing super fancy. The top surface details are fantastic. I don't know. I think I think it turned out kind of nice. Obviously, holding them in my hand, looking a little bit closer, I can tell which one is the TPU and which one is the PLA. But I have to say that um, how cool is that that we get that we get prints that uh, are super flexible, right? Look at I mean, look at this. Come on, look, isn't that cool? right? That we get a print like that that's flexible uh, versus a print like that, which is printed in traditional PLA, obviously nice and rigid. And uh, look, isn't that cool? I had to make sure they were the same way. Isn't that cool? Look at that. I think that's pretty nice. Pretty cool. And, uh, and one of them is flexible, which is kind of fun. I like it. So anyway, this machine, uh, the KE is super impressive. Um, I like everything about it. I like that it has a super quick assembly. The interface is simple to use. The print results are fantastic. And uh, and ultimately, I think uh, it's going to be a fantastic printer for anyone. Now, price right now, $279 US for this machine. That is absolutely fantastic. You're getting a 500 millimeters per second clipper 3D printer for $279 US. It's pretty good. Of course, I'll have links for the printer and the filament in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, I would love to have a like, a thumbs up, and uh, definitely hit that subscribe if you haven't hit it already. We're a small channel, and that helps us out a lot. Let me give a huge thank you to our YouTube members and our Patreon supporters. You are what make this content possible, and we are grateful for you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we will see you in the next one.